we have been discussing atomic uh, absorption and uh, spectral interferences. In the last uh, slide, I had shown you the, uh, that uh, the resonance lines are most important in this thing when the uh, AS is specific for each element because of the resonance line, but quite often the resonance line not quite often um, sometimes the resonance lines of two different elements combine are almost similar are all exactly they match in terms of frequency and wavelength. So, when they match the monochromator is not able to distinguish between two different atoms uh, uh, resonance lines. So, there will be uh, enhancement of the signal whenever there is spectral interference and if the sample contains both the elements there will be definitely enhancement of the signal and if it is not there it does not make uh, a difference anyway. So, the hollow cathode lamp basically emits the re re atomic uh, uh, emission radiation of a specific element that is able to induce absorption of atoms. Okay. Uh, so, this arrangement is called as lock and key effect uh, that means hollow cathode lamp should emit the radiation and uh, uh, free atom should absorb that. So, it is like a lock and key uh, as far as spectral resonance uh, measurement is concerned. So, unlike emission technique spectral interferences are very less in atomic absorption spectrometry. Why? Because emission lines there are quite a few may be several hundreds, but resonance lines are very few one or two may be not more than that. So, the a spectral interference can occur uh, when an absorbing wavelength of an element present in the sample, but not being determined, but it its so, resonance line falls within the bandwidth of the absorption line of the element of interest. This is the technical definition of spectral interference. The first sentence in this slide is the definition a spectral interference can occur when an absorbing wavelength of an element or analyte present in the sample, but not being determined falls within the bandwidth of the absorption line. That means, monochromator is unable to distinguish between the uh, resonance lines of two different elements, which falls within the bandwidth of the absorption line. Okay. So, the results will be very high due to the contribution of the interfering element. This uh, we, uh, I have explained to you time and again that spectral interference means enhancement of the signal rather than reduction in the signal attenuation. In atomic absorption spectrometry, the spectral interferences may be classified into three groups. We normally do that. So, what are the different classes that uh, we uh, classify? So, suppose there are there is more than one absorption line in the spectral band pass from the same element. Suppose there are two absorption lines within plus or minus 0 0.003 to 0 0.005 nanometers range monochromator cannot distinguish and some non absorbed line emitted by excitation source within that band, piece, band pass width the hollow cathode lamp gives you some uh, additional absorbance. So, that also cannot be uh, separated that means, it is the non absorbing radiation emitted by the excitation source which cannot be separated from the uh, by the monochromator. Okay. So, third type is spectral overlap in the atom source. So, in the atomic source that is in the flame atomic spectral interferences observed uh, can be observed in the flame AS and reported literatures are shown in the next table. I want to show you 
some of the spectral overlaps in the atomic atom source. Uh, so, we will uh, I do not know where is the table, but I will try to insert it in the next class or later. Now, the we will discuss about the non specific absorption. Uh, we have already discussed a little bit about the non specific absor absorption from different matrix components like chloride, bromide, so sulphate, phosphate, etcetera. But the uh, these interferences, if they are spectral in nature, the non specific interferences also enhance the actual reading, that means absorbance will be higher, but the sensitivity is not improved because non specific absorbance normally it means that uh, the absorbance is not continuous all the time it would not be there non specific absorbance means non specific. It may be there in one matrix it may not be there in another matrix or if you want to analyze uh, uh, lead in the blood there may be non specific absorbance may be more, but if you want to analyze lead in the air it may be different because the air components are different compared to blood components like that. There are in water sea water so many places the non specific absorbance is always there that we have seen in the interferences uh, section and I had shown you the table uh, containing sodium chloride, potassium, phosphate, silica, alumina and all those things. Uh, so, what we want to tell you is that the non specific absorbance is seen either by scattering the absorption line by the solid particles of the absorption of the resonance line by undissociated molecules that is molecular absorption basically what we want to tell you is it is a molecular absorption may not be exactly same in all matrix. Okay. So, the scattering phenomena is essentially analogous to turbidity in spectrophotometry. So, uh, if you have taken the course you know that in atomic absorption or in spectrophotometry we measure the uh, the transmittance of the sample is very important. So, even in spectrophotometry if the sample is turbid absorbance reading will be uh, very high because of the scattering phenomena. So, uh, just like molecular spectrophotometry the solid particles if they are in the flame in atomic absorption they um, tend to uh, broaden the absorption line or the resonance line by the undissociated molecules. So, actually any broadening of the absorption line any broadening of the absorption line results in the general reduction in the sensitivity of the sample okay, uh, analyte. So, the solid sometimes the solid particles are formed by the inability of the flame to vaporize everything if the flame temperature is low obviously, it cannot vaporize all the solid particles. This we have seen earlier in the determination of chromium in presence of uh, molybdenum and iron because the temperature of the acetylene flame is only 2400 and we recommended 3000 using nitrous oxide. So, same case is uh, I am telling you here that solid particles formed by the inability of the flame to vaporize all the dissolved solids of the sample solution others not analyte and apart from analyte all the dissolved solids or it may be due to the formation of carbon particles in the flame. Now, this requires a little bit of consideration. Okay. So, what I want to tell you in atomic absorption is uh, that the solid particles <laughs> whenever they uh, vaporize 
the spectral interference occurs when the emission of the solid particles occurs in the resonance line range that is band, band pass width. Okay. So, that is why we call it spectral interference. If it is somewhere else, the monochromator does not pick it up, but it will definitely pick up that portion of the radiation in the spectral band pass width. If there are a lot of solids in the sample, even though it is non specific, sometimes what happens is there will be a lot of carbon atoms, and carbon when it burns, it gives you continuous emission okay, that will cover the resonance line also. So, that portion of the radiation coming from carbon particles burning or scattering and emission lines will be picked up by the monochromator whatever is there within the band pass width of the sample. Okay. So, that is what we mean here. So, the within the band pass width of the sample radiation whatever is the radiation within that range apart from the analyte will be picked up and it gives you additional absorbance. So, uh, the magnitude of this effect varies considerably depending upon the wavelength at which measurements are being taken. If it is in the visible range carbon interference will be quite high and uh, if it is in UV it may be a little less. Normally light scattering element effects particularly those elements that absorb at lower wavelengths. This is an important aspect. Normally light scattering affects the elements, it affects that means it decreases increases the absorbance at lower wavelengths. So, the molecular absorption when does it occur? When a molecular species in has an at atomic absorption has an absorption profile that overlaps the element of the interest. This problem is most serious in the uh, wavelength region below 300 nanometers. So, molecular absorption bands are relatively broad compared to atomic absorption profiles and the molecular absorption and light scattering are also known as non specific or background absorption the molecular absorption both and light scattering due to solid particles they are also known as non specific or background absorption. This background interference we can detect if the Beer Lambert's law does not pass through the origin this is the bottom line that means, whenever you do a calibration curve in atomic absorption what you do is you take standard solutions 1 ppm, 2 ppm, 3 ppm, 5 ppm etcetera measure the atomic absorption by aspirating into the sample that absorbance unit will be 0 to 2 absorbance. So, if you plot absorbance versus concentration the calibration line if it does not pass through the origin then it means that there can be there could there is some amount of background interference ok. That is the only um, you know the only way we can determine whether there is background absorbance or not. So, this point you should remember um, especially um, whenever you are doing atomic absorption sometimes you will be baffled why it is not passing through the origin whenever I even though I do not put the sample uh, in the analyte in the blank or reference the because I need a 0 reading still it does not it shows some amount, certain amount of absorbance. So, it does not pass through the origin, but it passes cuts the y axis somewhere above or below. So, that difference is what is background absorbance, but it can happen due to molecular species or it can happen due to scattering. Okay. So, the non specific absorbance absorption was initially uh, we attributed it to salt particles that is which do not vaporize. Okay. Now, but a strong evidence is there um, to indicate that scattering is often insignificant by comparison with molecular absorption. That means, there are two uh, reasons why 
there will be there is enhancement due to background. So, one is scattering by the solid particles, another is by the absorption of the molecular species like C H, N H 2, O H etcetera, carbon, C N, cyanogen uh, radicals etcetera. And these have got absorption peak start for starting from 300 to 600. Okay. So, part of it will cover the resonance line also. So, among the two that is molecular absorption and scattering, the scattering is almost insignificant compared to molecular absorption in both flame and non flame both situation. So, the background absorption basically plays a vital role in the determination of trace elements in a different composite matrix, blood, plasma, environmental sample, drugs, air, any environmental any sample you take background absorption is always certain amount of it will be there. And if uh, the maximum, maximum portion comes from scattering the from the molecular absorption rather than scattering, because normally we ensure that whenever we prepare a standard solution or even the sample solution, there should not be any undissolved particles in the sample. Even in atomic absorption analysis, the sample should be free from suspended impurities, because suspended impurities also get aspirated into the flame and scattering takes place. So, what do we do? We use a pre filtration step to remove all the suspended particles, then only we allow it to the uh, into the flame. Suppose, we do not do that, then what happens? Many of the particles present in the sample, they clog the uh, burner ho holes, because burner hole is not at such a high temperature but it is fairly high temperature because the flame is 2300 and the base of the flame um, it may be around uh, 1200 uh, it may be around 1600 to 1800 degree centigrade many of the solid particles do not vaporize so they clog they go and sit there in small holes and block the air flow or acetylene flow so this means that the material will not be uh, fuel and oxidant will not be burning continuously and there will be pressure, back pressure will be there. So, I keep on passing the gas it does not get out. So, there is a pressure block and the flame may backfire. Okay. So, this is what happens especially in atomic absorption. So, the contribution of the scattering in atomic absorption is always much less, because we take care to see that suspended particles are very less. But if the matrix component itself contains certain amount of solids like sodium chloride in sea water, they do clog and it is important for us to keep the uh, atomic absorption system and that burner cleaning using a metal plate or something like blade something like that. So, that the holes are kept clean all the time just like what you do in your Bunsen burner or in your uh, home at uh, LPG gas. Okay. So, different methods have been worked out by the manufacturers to control the background absorption. Okay. So, I wanted you to see this uh, slide and understand the interference of salt particles as well as uh, the um, contribution from the molecular species. Okay. What are the different methods for uh, background correction? Now, you imagine that uh, uh, we are discussing uh, the background absorption Okay. It is an interference in atomic absorption and background absorption must be corrected uh, before we uh, actually take the absorbance from the analyte. So, background absorption if at all if it is there it can be reduced 
okay. it can be um, reduced by flame conditions okay that is number 1 number 2 we can reduce it by selection of non absorbing another resonance line where absorbance is very less that also is possible then i can use a deuterium lamp measure the whatever is the deuterium lamp and blank so whatever blank is giving you absorbance you measure that and assume that contribution of the sample uh, background is almost same in this analyte. This is known as deuterium background correction. So, it measures all other absorbance within the band pass width of the hollow cathode lamp and then corrects uh, that absorbance. And then Zeeman effect we have already seen uh, yesterday or uh, about uh, two classes before that whenever I place a magnetic field the Zeeman splitting will take place the it will into pi and sigma components sigma components are 25 25 and pi is 30, 50 and if I put a rotating uh, polarograph uh, rotating uh, um, uh, rotating um, if I put a polarizer if I put a rotating polarizer then uh, whenever the pi component is turned out of the path I get only the background and then that background can be corrected or I can use smith Hifche correction also. So, all these things are possible for the background correction. Now, look at this slide this is what I have listed here one is high temperature flame to burn everything selection of non absorbing line this is in the ultimate case when you cannot do anything better than uh, uh, you cannot avoid absorption at all interference. Deuterium lamp normally it measures and Zeeman effect yes, Smith Hifje effect yes. So, these are, these are the different kinds of background absorption systems and whenever you buy an atomic absorption you will have to select one of these um, as the background absorption system depending upon the purpose for which you buy atomic absorption uh, system. So, if you want to do very high level research uh, then uh, Zeeman effect would be ideal, but the disadvantage is Zeeman effect will give you reduced sensitivity. Deuterium lamp cannot correct for spectral interference and non absorbing line if you choose there may it may not match with the matrix high temperature flame not always possible and uh, Smith if J is again something to do only with the hollow cathode lamp. Okay. So, mm, it can be controlled to some extent, but not fully by using a higher temperature it cannot do a correction fully. It breaks down the absorbing molecular species that is that is okay, but it does not do justice to the background absorption correction. It can also be controlled by selecting a non absorbing line about 10 nanometer away from the resonance line. What we normally do is uh, uh, we assume that uh, we assume at, at the spectral wavelength resonance wavelength you measure the absorbance and measure the absorbance about 10 nanometer away that is uh, not the at, uh, resonance line, but 10 nanometers away we assume that uh, absorbance is uniform within plus or minus 10 nanometers. Okay. So, if it uh, does not change much within plus or minus 10 nanometers it also will not change much and on the spectral resonance line. So, with that assumption we can measure the absorbance about 10 nanometers or whatever it is. So, subtract that much it is a crude method actually uh, what you should do is measure the background absorptions only at the resonance line, but 10 nanometers away whenever you are in faced with difficulties and uh, accuracy is more important you can take a look at this aspect also. So, the signal from the non absorbing line should be deducted from the signal obtained from the absorbing line that is what we do. 
So, the selection of the non absorbing line uh, is such that it should not be absorbed by the sample matrix. Uh, this is important because sample matrix also should not be absorbing it should only be the background. Okay. So, the instrument manufacturers give you a deuterium lamp 99 percent of the instrument manufacturers do give you a deuterium lamp for background correction. So, I have explained to you the logic of background correction using deuterium lamp it, it has got a uh, continuous absorption line covering the resonance line. So, within the normal band pass width when the hollow cathode lamp is on deuterium lamp radiation is also on they are ratioed and then that much is subtracted from the absorbance line electronically. So, as we have already pointed out that the atomic absorption lines are very narrow and uh, when an atomic absorption of a hollow cathode lamp passes through an atomizer it will be absorbed by both the atoms and molecular absorption remains the same. However, atomic absorption contribution is almost nil due to, uh, to the background. So, uh, by subtracting the background value from the total absorption true absorption by the free atoms is obtained okay. standard band pass width this is SBW is standard band pass width and the molecular absorption in this range is uh, what is picked up because our uh, slit width is uh, between 0.2 and 0.5 nanometer in any instrument. Mm, so, the deuterium lamp used for this purpose gives a broad continuum spectrum about uh, uh, up to about 300 nanometers. Okay. So, the method of background correction works like this the absorbance of the sample occurring with the hollow cathode lamp that is AC that is sum of the absorption and background absorption atomic absorption A and A B. A is the uh, atomic absorption contribution from the background is A B. So, the absorbance with deuterium lamp is uh, the background only background correct absorption that is A D is equal to A B. So, initially both the signals from the hollow cathode lamp and deuterium lamp are made equal and then true absorbance would be A C minus A D that is equalized and this is in the log scale. Okay. So, in the log scale the actual absorbance would be log of uh, C O mi minus uh, C T that is intensity divided uh, subtracted by D O and D T. This is for the uh, deuterium lamp, this is for the total chemical lamp, uh, chemical as well as this thing. So, from the chemical lamp what I have is uh, that it is a function of the initial uh, concentration d o and uh, um, from the both and then ratio we have to apply a correction ratio. Uh, so, initially what I do is I see intensity of the chemical C species is made equal to uh, deuterium lamp signal. So, the true absorbance is log of d t by I c uh, log of I d t by I c t that means intensity of the transmitted light from the deuterium lamp divided by intensity of the transmitted light from the hollow cathode lamp. This is the true absorbance. So, in this method the speed of background correction is critical we have to do it as we measure. Uh, so, there must be a minimum delay time between the total absorbance and background correct measured absorbance there should not be any delay in the measurement not even a few microseconds. So, if we measure the absorbance without delay then I can apply the correction. So, the magnitude of the why because magnitude of the background correction background signal it may change rapidly with time also. Uh, if you plot a graph like this. So, when the graph goes like this very slowly it is a different matter, but if there is uh, there are spikes in the um, background it has to be corrected as and when they occur 
So, that has to occur within a few microseconds that is the challenge. So, uh, mag uh, normally uh, within 20 milliseconds the background value can change by 0 0.2 absorbance also. 0 0.2 absorbance is quite high. So, 20 milliseconds it can change background itself can change from 0 to 0 0.2 absorbance. So, if the difference between the measurements is about 10 milliseconds, uh, it leads to an error of about 0 0.1 absorbance, 20 milliseconds 0 0.2 absorbance. So, our measurement is every 10 milliseconds that means, it error can occur up to 0 0.1 absorbance right. So, the ultra pulse system the time gap in the ultra pulse system the time gap is only 1 millisecond that is the correction and if even if we use 0 0.1 millisecond the absorbance error is about 0 0.01 unit understood. So, this is very important because what we are saying essentially is we say that background absorbance is all that there all the time it can be corrected by deuterium lamp, but it can change very fast. So, we need a very fast data acquisition system in atomic absorption because within 20 milliseconds the absorption changes of uh, can change up to 0 0.2 uh, absorbance units. So, if I make a measurement at 10 milliseconds 0 0.1 absorbance, 1 millisecond 0 0.01 absorbance unit that is also very significant. So, uh, we have to have a very quick background correction system less than 1 milliseconds. So, electronically it is possible and uh, recent uh, since last 20 25 years there are uh, systems which can do even up to 0 0.1 milliseconds, but in atomic absorption spectrometry 0 0.1 millisecond is more than sufficient. We need not go to 0 0.01 milliseconds or correction data acquisition system may not be necessary. So, the here I have a list I have listed uh, the advantages of uh, ultra pulse background system. So, what um, I, I am comparing three systems one is ultra pulse that is I keep on giving a pulse where a, a, all the absorption is taken care of um, at um, uh, milli within milliseconds Smith if j I am putting a, in this system I am increasing the current of the hollow cathode lamp and here in Zeeman I am just putting a magnet. So, these are the three different systems I want to compare now. So, the sensitivity loss in the ultra pulse is almost nil that means, the signal will not be affected by atomic absorption, but in Smith if j I can lose up to 6 times the sensitivity that means, if the absorbance is about uh, 0 0.3 I end up with about 0 0.05 absorbance 6 times ok and uh, here it can be up to 3 times the sensitivity loss. This is mainly because uh, the sigma and pi lines of the Zeeman atomic absorption themselves split. So, the actual absorbance what you get in Zeeman is about 50 percent maximum ok. Uh, so, suppose I use flame furnace and vapor generation. Uh, so, in vapor generation flame furnace ultra pulse I can use Smith if j I can use and Zeeman you cannot use ok. Uh, there is no um, uh, system that you can use it for flame furnace uh, and vapor generation. Vapor generation is a little difficult, but um, the dynamic range in calibration linearity is normal this is reduced this is normal in Zeeman. So, it is not does not get affected. Dynamic range this is also normal this is curved this is curved because uh, of the signal acquisition problems. So, number of sample readings I can take 200 times I can pass ultra pulse take the reading 
here in Smith if j I can do it uh, 10 times per second or something like that uh, reading and here I can do up to 50 times. So, whenever I do 200 times the reading will be more reliable than 10 times or 50 times. So, so 50 uh, 200 is better than 50 that is better than 10. So, background measurement delay also can happen uh, in the uh, of about 1 microsecond here it is about 4 microseconds and here it is about 10 microseconds. So, among the 3 if you have a choice whenever you are buying an atomic absorption spectrometer what you should be doing is do it uh, ultra pulse if possible otherwise Zeeman otherwise Smith FJ depending upon the requirement of the quality of research what you would like to do. Okay. So, uh, deuterium correction background there are advantages and disadvantages. So, the drawbacks include incorrect results in the presence of structured background occurs and then no correction for spectral interference nothing can be done and different geom except go for some other resonance line here in the second one. So, in the third one different geometrical and optical paths are there. So, there will be a certain amount of loss of sensitivity and there is certain amount of loss of intensity of the light signal also. Okay. So, these are the typical uh, problems with a deuterium background in spite of this uh, 90 percent of the atomic absorption spectrometers where use of the AAS is very routine and minimal uh, routine is more important routine then the people do go for deuterium correction. Okay. In Smith FJ self reversal takes place and lamp is first run at low current and then high current. So, uh, whenever there is high current there is uh, no absorbance and only the background will be checked and a brief pulse of much higher current is passed through and we subtract the sample from the um, background. So, advantages of this method include background correction can be applied in UV and visible range okay, both of them. In Smith FJ accurate correction for the structured background that is what I was trying to tell you that if the background keeps on changing very fast then accurate correction is possible with respect to this uh, Smith FJ and single light source is required I do not need a deuterium lamp or I do not need any other equipment to provide ultra pulse I do not need any magnet for this single hollow cathode lamp same thing can be used that is an one advantage now. So, correction of spectral interference is definitely possible and no bending of the calibration curve that means, the calibration curve will be passing through the origin and you do not have to worry about the accuracy of the analysis. Okay. So, we will discuss about uh, the modulation of the atomic absorption signal in our next class. Thank you very much.